Welcome back to the refugee series. This episode 3 is about the journey that asylum seekers make from their home country to the safe, to the safe country. Now, when asylum seekers make the difficult decision to leave their home country, they have to think about how they will get to the safe country. And oftentimes, if they are from a developing nation, it is difficult to get a visa in a developed country. And the developed country tends to be the safe country. So in order to get a visa, whether it's a tourist visa or a study visa, or a work visa, it can get progressively difficult. So with a work visa, obviously you have to have the right credentials and education in order to get a work visa, and it's very competitive. With regards to a study visa, of course you have to have the money to be able to get um, a course that you can study on, which you have to pay. With regards to a tourist visa, oftentimes people's visas are rejected, especially if they come from certain countries like India, for example, because the notion is that they will come and then not go back when it's time for them to return. So getting a visa obviously costs money. You have to have a passport. You have to have done a process. You have to think it out. Whereas sometimes with um, asylum seekers, it's a very quick decision when danger happens and they have to run away. So oftentimes the, the way that the journey is made is through smugglers or tra being trafficked. So coming in um, lorries or boats because they cannot come by plane. So it's coming by land and sea is usually the way in which asylum seekers come. And this can be very, very treacherous and difficult because you see stories where the boats collapse and capsize because they're in dinghies in the um, sea and they're not good, well made in order to deal with the winds. Or also coming in these lorries, you hear stories where they suffocate and die inside the lorry because there's no oxygen. And I've even heard stories where someone tied themselves to the, or got inside the bottom of a plane and just froze to death and fell from the air because it's so cold. And then you hear horror stories where you have traffickers who torture, rape and extortionately ask for more money from relatives for the imprisonment of their um, individuals that they're taking abroad. This happens a lot in Africa and then people get put into slavery or servitude or kept in bunkers underground, organ harvesting happening, organs taken out of their body unless they pay money. So there are people out there who can take real advantage and abuse the system. So you have to be very careful when you are making the journey to a safe country. Ideally you would um, have thought this out for years. So if you're LGBT for example, and you know in your country you could be killed or worse, then basically I would urge you to get an education if you can, learn English whilst you're young and try to get all the resources possible such as passport, visa if you can. And if you cannot, there are some amazing organisations, the links which are put underneath. So you've got Rainbow Railroad, which is a Canadian, web, uh, Canadian organisation that funds and helps individuals to go abroad. So if you don't have the visa or the money and the ability to be able to get abroad, they can help you. You write their story, I'll leave the link below. You also can contact UNHCR office, that's in your city, your country, sorry, usually in the capital. And you can also go to the, um, the International Committee of the Red Cross asking for asylum based upon membership on a particular social group, which is LGBT, saying you don't have the money to be able to go abroad. And they can help you once your case is successful to resettle abroad. This can take one to two years. It's useful to email them, speak with them on the phone, and then make an appointment and uh, visit them. And then the final options you have is also to contact the embassies of the country you want to go to in your home country, which is usually in the capital, such as the Canadian Embassy or the um, Australian Embassy. Now, Canadian Embassy 
Canadian system for asylum is one of the best in the world and they take them a lot of people as well to help them. Norway is very good as well. So there you have it. It's, if you cannot afford or you don't have the resources to be able to go abroad yourself, there are ways and um, methods which I put in the link below and mentioned, like UNHCR, Red Committee of Red, uh, the International Committee of Red Cross, uh, Canadian Railroad, etc., and the embassies that could help you as well. Be prepared as much as you can especially if you know that you want to go abroad to a safe country and research the best way of doing it. Do not blindly, do not blindly run away, do not blindly trust other people who are traffickers because you don't know what they will do. If you know a way and method that people have done that's safe then that's better. Otherwise I would recommend contacting the other organizations and getting a safe route because they will uh, get your visa and your flight and get you abroad in a much safer way which is better than being killed along the way you know you're getting away from danger and you die along the way it's not good so those are the different ways of you know making the journey safely in the next video i will talk about what you do once you arrive at the safe country how you can do your claim and then we'll go into the interview process later. So please share this comment, uh, share this video with whoever will benefit. Like it, leave a comment below, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.